Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the penultimate introduction to quantitative chemistry video. This is number 23, looking at the combined gas law. And what we've done with our previous videos is we've looked at a number of important laws that relate to the properties or behaviours of gases. We've looked at uh, the gay lussac law, Boyle's law, Charles law, and also Avogadro's law. And what we found in each of these is there, if we hold two of the variables constant, we can identify a relationship between two of the other variables. In Boyle's law, we found that pressure was inversely proportional to volume, and therefore pressure times volume was a constant. For Charles law, we found that there was a proportional relationship between volume and temperature, as long as we kept pressure and the number of moles constant. And for the gay lussac law too, we found a proportionality between pressure and temperature. But what are all of these things, um, how are they useful? How can we use our kinetic theory to explain or to help us establish mathematical relationships that relate three of these variables, volume, temperature and pressure? Well, the fact that they are all constants, the fact that we can identify the sorts of changes that occur as we think about a particular container and a certain number of moles of gas particles that might be present in that container and what might happen as we increase the temperature, uh, change the pressure and also the volume from an initial state to a final state. And the fact that each of these is a um, particular, uh, has a particular relationship to each of the others means that as we're thinking about these, as long as we don't change the numbers of particles that we have, we can find relationships between them fairly easily. And what we want to do is we want to see if there's a way that we can combine all three of these laws into one single law that allows us to um, put them all together. In fact, when we combine the, our knowledge of the fact that P is proportional to T and V is proportional to T, but P is inversely proportional to V, then we can work out a mathematical relationship which has, is now known as the combined gas law. And the combined gas law brings together in combination um, the fact that uh, pressure is proportional to temperature, so P on T is a constant and V on T is a constant, and P times V is a constant. And when you bring all of these three different types of relationships together, what we find is that P times V on T is also, for uh, gases, a constant. It's just allowing us to bring each of these together. It's not important for you to be able to derive the um, mathematical relationship between them. You can play around with it if you would like. Um, but it is important for you to understand that this is a constant. The relationship between pressure, volume and temperature is a constant. And obviously we've not considered the number of moles or the number of particles in this case. Um, so we're assuming that the um, container is a sealed container in which we can change the pressure, we can change the temperature, we can change the volume, but we're not changing the number of particles that are present. To put the formula into a form that's similar to what you've already seen, P1 times V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 times V2 divided by T2. So these expressions here are equivalent and for exactly the same reasons um, that we discussed above. So once again, this, the sorts of questions you're going to get are going to be a little bit more complex because they're going to involve uh, sets of conditions. And just as we leave our look at the laws, there's one more thing that probably needs to be said, and that, that is that all of these equations are based on ideal gases. 
So the fact that gases behave in a perfect ideal way and don't, um, that there are no losses, there are no changes, there is no uh, associated um, change in any number of moles, for example, when we're looking at pressure, volume and temperature, if they don't behave exactly like ideal gases, then some of the laws that we've looking at that we've been looking at may not hold 100% in all cases. But as far as we're concerned and for the the um, the ability that you have to substitute values into mathematical formulae to understand what the question is asking you to do and to solve these problems, we're going to assume the fact that gases are ideal gases. But we do have one more place to go before we close our discussion of gases and we'll look at that in the final video. Thanks for watching.